analytics has been around for a very long time. Nowadays, we see a lot of terms associated with analytics. No matter where you look at, you see big data, data science, analytics, mostly used in the same context. Context being converting data into actionable insight for better decision making. Here is a word cloud collected from some of the discussion boards in business settings that shows you some of the keywords that highlighted in business circles related to analytics and analytics related topics. On the right hand side, I put together the terminology of how big is big data. Most of you are quite familiar with megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, maybe petabytes, but beyond that, like exabyte, zettabyte, yottabyte, and the last two, pronobyte and gigabyte, are the ones that are not ISI certified yet, but we're moving towards that direction. So the size of the data that we deal is increasing exponentially. Many reasons behind it, which we're gonna talk about in a few minutes, but the size of the data is not the only problem that we have to deal with. Big data is not just the volume, it's a lot more than that. So where does big data come from? Or simply where does data come from? If you look at the good old days of 80s, 90s, and 2000s, most of the data came from business processes, from your ERP systems, your CRM systems, your supply chain management systems, and that data went into a relational database where rows and columns are established to tables and tables are related to one another. We called it relational database systems and we use that for a very long time for our business processes. The next layer, the medium size data, the complexity, the variety of the data comes from internet and social media and that happened in recent years, in less than 10 years, being generated and collected and tapped into. So the second layer exponentially increased the amount of data that is being generated, collected, and utilized in business settings, as well as in social settings. The top layer, the outer layer, that actually makes it really big data is the data that's generated automatically by machines and sensors. Some of the examples would be the RFID, a radio frequency identifier tags that we attach to products and even live objects so that we can track them all over the world to optimize our supply chain management activities. GPS sensors, all of which create a lot of data that once you figure out how to tap into, provide a tremendous amount of value to business organizations. A lot of things on the outer layer nowadays are being called Internet of Things, everything sort of communicating with each other using internet, the means and characters of the internet to communicate. That communication generates tremendous amount of data that kind of characterizes what big data is and the kind of challenge that it brings to us along with the opportunities that, that, uh, that it provides us. Another way to look at Internet of Things or Internet of Everything is on this shape on the right hand side in the tenfold and hundredfold expansion on the collection of data that big data is generating, generating for us to tap into. The data that is not structured anymore, it could be in the form of uh, audio, video, and anything in between, all those network connection-related data is also a good part of new generation data that we have to deal with that we call big data. The sources that we're going to use in this lecture comes from several books, books that I have been fortunate enough to co-author or author. The one that actually directly related to this live lesson is the one called Real World Data Mining. It was published in 2015. Most everything that we will cover in this lesson is part of this real world data mining book and it's published by Pearson. So what is analytics? The name has been coined in the last few years but what lies behind analytics has been around for quite a long time. If you dig deep down inside of it, 
you will see that analytics is nothing but data plus mathematical statistical models combined together synergistically to produce what we call insight. Insight in the sense of actionable insight knowledge to make better, faster decisions for a complex phenomena, for a complex situation. The difference between analytics and business analytics is that business analytics is focused on business problems and business opportunities. Now, opportunities and problems collectively need to be addressed on a timely and effective fashion. So business analytics helps business managers to improve business performance. Some of the examples of that would be to improve relationship with customers. Customers, as we all know, is the centerpiece of business success. That means you need to understand the needs and wants your customer. And then in some cases, you need to create those needs and wants of the customers. And then when the customers actually need your products and services, you need to have them in your inventory so you can satisfy the customers before your competitors do. Business analytics also helps you identify fraudulent transactions, fraudulent behaviors, and by doing so saves you a lot of money. It helps you streamline your business processes. It helps you enhance operations. Basically, it helps you both identify what is the right thing to do, the effectiveness, if you will, and also helps you identify how you would do it in the best possible way. That means how can you achieve your goals using the least amount of resources, accomplish what you need to accomplish in the shortest possible time, and do it at the highest level of quality to capture and maintain customer satisfaction, more so than your competitors do. It also helps you identify features in your products and services that needs to be improved or maintained or enhanced. Good old fashioned survey based customer assessment, customer opinion collection methods are not working anymore. Now that we have the social media, you can tap into the population and how the population at large thinks about your products, your services, and the specifics features in your products and services that you need to enhance. What are they talking about positively and negatively? You can get that using what's called sentiment analysis, a subcomponent of text mining, which we're going to talk about. And then by doing so, you can pinpoint what features that you need to focus on and invest your resources to make your products and services better. So they fit better with your customers' needs wants and expectations. Not just needing, but also meeting and exceeding their expectation is what you're shooting for. Analytics, is it a buzzword? Is it the same thing that we have been talking about for quite a long time in the last 10, 15 years that we named it business intelligence? We have had other buzzwords floating in the business circles like intelligence, the mining. It looks like all of those words are merging into this new buzzword, popular word, I would say, analytics. So business intelligence turned into, nowadays, business analytics. Customer intelligence is now being called customer analytics. What lies behind it is mostly the same thing, but the label of it is changing. So the popularity of the terms are changing over time. Web mining turned into web analytics. Data mining now is being called data analytics. So analytics versus big data, how they relate to one another? Because analytics may or may not use quote unquote big data. Data is data. Whatever the data that you have in your organization, you have to make the most out of it. It could be structured, meaning it could be the data that you have in your relational databases, your transactional systems, where the data is captured in rows and columns in tables in Tables are related to one another in a relational database, and then you can tap in to figure out what are the knowledge nuggets, what are the insights that you can extract to make your business function better. Now, when you move from that structured, relatively small data into big data, 
the challenge increased, but also the opportunities become bigger. So big data brings together not only the large volume, but also the variety of the data. Now the data is not all structured rows and columns. It could be voice, it could be video, it could be textual mostly. So text data actually is probably 80 to 85 percent of the business data is captured in some kind of unstructured textual form. We need to find a way to use computers and algorithms to convert that unstructured text into actionable insight. And also velocity, the speed at which the data is being generated, kind of brings together a lot of challenges to capture, store, and analyze data. Again, we will talk about that when we talk about big data later on. Maybe you don't have to store the data to be able to extract knowledge out of it. Maybe you need to analyze it while the data is passing by, while the data is being generated, and then you can tap into and extract the knowledge off of it as the data is being generated without actually intermediately storing it. So it kind of boils down to big data analytics, the new way of conducting analytics on big data, big data in the sense of volume, variety, velocity, and, and other E's that piles into it. Bigger the data is better, but it also comes with a lot of challenges, not only from the storage standpoint, but also from computational efficiency standpoint. And because of that, a lot of new technologies are developed to deal with the size, the variety, and the velocity of the data. And again, we will talk about some of those technologies later on in this live lesson. Now, a lot of people make a distinction between analytics and analysis. And a lot of people think that those two terms are synonymous. Are they? In my opinion, they are not the same thing. Actually, analytics is a superset of analysis. If you look at the definition of analysis, analysis is the process of separating a whole into its parts so that it can be critically examined at a granular level. So idea here is that the system is so complex and in totality you cannot analyze it, you cannot make sense out of it, and because of that, you decompose it into smaller pieces. You do the analysis, critical analysis of it at the lower level, at the granular level, and then you capture the outcome of those granular level essence into a higher level. Basically, you are synthesizing your findings at a higher level to make sense out of the complete system. So analysis is one side where you decompose it. Synthesis is on another side where you merge and combine and collide all your findings. Analytics, in my opinion, is analysis, synthesis, and many of the other tasks that comes together to convert data into actionable insights. So it's a multi-step process of analysis, synthesis, merging, combining, augmenting, and iteratively going through the data to extract actionable insight, the knowledge, the discovery of the knowledge out of the, the large repositories of data.